Coming up on Downloaded, we examine the future of TV. Are broadcast networks a thing of the past? Will Netflix usurp HBO as the premier source of original scripted content? All that, and we got a lot more this episode of Downloaded. Hey, welcome to Downloaded. This is the show where we gather the most opinionated voices in the tech field today, focus all that energy on the stories impacting the tech world. I'm your host, Jim Lauderback. Now, normally, what we do is we look at the big stories of the week, uh, but because, and we take this on Friday, it goes out on Friday or Saturday up to YouTube and, and elsewhere. But uh, I'm actually going to Jazz Fest in New Orleans. Um, so uh, when you're watching this, I'll be at Jazz Fest. Uh, so we're not taping on Friday. We're taping a couple days earlier so I can go have fun. Thank you very much, Roger Chang and everybody else. So instead, we're going to talk about an in-depth issue that sort of bubbled up over the past few weeks. It's been happening for a long, long time. All about the future of TV, how it works, and what we're going to be doing in the future and what our whole video-based entertainment world is going to look like. We're going to try and get that all done in the next uh, so many minutes. And joining me to help me through all of this is Rob DeMillo, CTO of Revision 3. Rob, thank you for joining us. Thanks a lot. Uh, and Jason Cross from TechHive. It's good to have oh, you back. Thank you. It's good to see you. Jason and I have worked together as well and uh, super smart in this area, knows everything, both of them. Um, so we're going to get right into it. Now, the first thing that's been happening on the sort of, sort of news hook side so Netflix released the results um, like a week or so ago, and uh, Reed Hastings, the CEO, did this like like 29-page document about the future of the internet and TV and how it's all beautiful. Mm. Rob, what did you think about that one? Uh, I thought it was kind of interesting. I mean, he was right and wrong at the same time. Like he, he was right in the fact that um, uh, production, uh, the, the way they're doing production, is definitely disruptive. Um, and he's right in the fact that I think linear TV's days are very, very numbered. But I uh, don't agree with the sort of general Netflix concept of you know aggregating all of these properties together under one hood and hoping that people go to that spot. Yeah, and we'll get a link up to that one in our comments here as well, so you can yeah. take a look at that if you want to read it. Another thing that happened, Jeff Bukes, head of Time Warner, also came out with his own set of, here's what the world looks like according to me. Uh, he said, first of all, said the internet is not taking over TV. What's happening is TV is taking over the internet. Hmm. And the other thing he said is that the internet, when it comes to video, is just one big video on demand service. Uh, Jason, you buy all that? Uh, if that's true, they're doing a bad job of it, right? <laughs> In what way? So tell me why. What are they doing? If, if the idea is that TV is taking over the internet, like I don't go anywhere on the internet and I get TV stuff very well. Yeah. yeah. Unless there's that Aereo thing where you know, they're recording. Um, Hulu's doing it is a terrible job. They don't. You know, for, they're not taking advantage of the internet in a very good way. It's not supported by enough of the networks. You don't get enough of their content often enough. Even if you pay for it, you get ads, and there's there's all kinds of problems with their business them. deals, right? And yeah, so. exactly. They're still treating the business deals of the of the internet right. as though right. it were broadcast television with an antenna. And well, so look, but uh, you brought up Aereo, things. which I think is is a great place to start because Aereo, the service, what they do is they take these little antennas that are probably about this big. And out in Brooklyn, they've got about 10,000 of them. All right, so yeah. they're this big. I just, they're tiny. Okay, they're yeah. teeny, teeny. Uh, but they, they, and basically, they create a virtual circuit from that antenna in a warehouse in Brooklyn to you with your computer or device in your uh, you know, penthouse apartment in New York City or wherever you might be. Right. Now, the, um, the broadcast networks are best because basically, if you spend money on cable, they get 50 cents or so for every household, even though their signals are available for free. Aereo totally disrupting this. Um, do you think Aereo is a good idea, Jason? Uh, I do. I think it's a good idea in that they're providing for people a service that uh, the broadcast networks aren't providing for themselves. Like yeah. they're not, like people want this. People want it. And their solution to uh, Aereo being, you know, something that people want and are trying to get and stuff like that is to shut them down in court instead of saying, right. oh, gee, maybe we should provide the service that people obviously want. Right. Now, so Aereo um, does something that you can do yourself. And Rob, I know you do it yourself. Mm -hmm. I do. You have an HD antenna at your house. Yeah. It, ta it, it looks at the I, I, HD antenna on in, in the San Francisco Sutro Hill or Tower or whatever. Um, or somewhere up there mm -hmm. in the mountains. And um, you, you get all of that stuff delivered for free to your computer that's hooked up to your big screen. Um, but it's not easy to do that, is it? It's not easy to do it. It's not consumer friendly. Um, I get way too much television, which is a lot of conversation. <laughs> but uh, what I do is I, I'm basically augmenting my cable service. So I still have, and this is really embarrassing, four 
cable tuners attached to that same box, right. plus the over-the-air antennas, and uh, it, it all pumps into a central computer that sort of flips through all that stuff. But yes, it's completely home-built, and it's specific to me, and I don't expect an everyone to go down to the store and buy one. Right, yeah, and Aereo is offering a solution that allows you to do this for a couple bucks a month, but it's, right. it's drop dead easy. That's right. Yeah, they're doing it all on the cloud in their you know, version, and then any device you have that's hooked up to the internet, you can go watch your broadcast television. Right, and for those of you who, who haven't seen Aereo, remember it is for only signals that are over the air right now. Yes. So it's only NBC, ABC, CBS, PBS, Which is WB, uh, CW, all the Korean, Mexican, um, French, German, and other channels that are broadcast that so, so right. we don't, you know, in, the, I don't watch because I don't know why people watch them. Yeah. So Aereo is a really good idea if you actually do believe in linear television. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it's got some, th some content that uh, works great all the time, like news and sporting events, but, you know, are you going to watch CSI on Aereo or are you going to like... They're doing a DVR in the cloud, though. Yeah. Okay. So you right. can say, I want this stuff and it's just up there. True. So yeah, that's where it gets yeah. really interesting. That's so true. Yeah. the people who are actually, um, besides some of the consumers who are using it, who are actually excited about Aereo, Jeff Bukes from Time Warner and the other cable operators, because they could build a little Aereo-like thing into their set-top boxes and not have to pay retrans fees for CBS, yeah. NBC, ABC, Fox, etc. Yeah. yeah, that's right. Um, so I also, uh, interestingly, are you subscribing? Are you going to subscribe to it? Uh, I want to subscribe to the one in Boston. Okay. Out here in San Francisco, that so I can watch sense. Patriots games. Makes sense. Um, yeah. But that's not really, that's not right. But why? I might do why, it. Why it's perfectly it not, why legal. Because I don't have a house in Boston. Right. Well, but it, let's say. No, but, you, but you will be renting an antenna in, in Boston. Boston. That's correct. And getting a virtual circuit to my house in San Francisco. You, yeah. You have a piece well, of real you're, estate you're, just, you're just streaming the video file that they record in Boston from their computers. Right. To your thing. So why not? I know, exactly. You're renting yeah. an antenna yeah. in Boston. And then you know what I don't have to do? I don't have to pay three bucks. The, the law doesn't say you have to have a home there. Right. It says you have to have the antenna there, right. and you will. So then I want to pay 300 bucks to um, the NFL for Sunday ticket to watch Patriots games. If that's the only game you want. And that's a good example of where the providers aren't that's giving right. pe the people that they want. You're, you're willing to pay, how much is Aereo a month? It's like eight bucks eight a month. Bucks a month. Like eight You're willing to pay eight bucks a month, but NFL's n not willing to go. You know what? For five bucks a month, you can get just all the Patriots games. Right. No, you have to buy three hundred dollar NFL Sunday ticket that's only on was a Direct TV, TV. Yeah. not other things. Why don't they just charge you five bucks a month to watch all the games you want from one team over the internet all the time? Then you don't have to get. Right. It's pricey. I'd pay ten bucks a game. Right. Right. You know, that's like ten games. That's a hundred bucks. I'd pay ten bucks a game. Right. But still a lot less than that. So, mm. um, so look, it, it, it's an interesting discussion because it really talks about um, where that market is going. But let's talk about the web and, and people watching web video. Yeah, Rob, you want to say something? I do, yeah. I want, to, I want to tie Go back ahead. into the Bukes article. You're waving your finger around. I do. I wave my finger around. <laughs> Excuse me. Which you can do anytime. Mm -hmm. yeah, which I Just do. Jump do. In. I do actually do it anytime. So the Bukes article ties into this. Um, when I was reading through it, the, the, the thing that struck me was he was confusing two terms. He kept saying television was going to push its way into the internet. That's true for television productions. Yes. But he was also he was conflating that with with uh, television delivery mechan mechanisms, well, right? And, and and that's gonna that is absolutely not gonna. So this is that. a I have a, this is a sore spot for me because it, I think it's really confusing because of the way that we have television, which are the existing programs that are a half hour, an hour long, or two hours long, delivered in this linear way that are being cut up that we're now watching on demand. Those pieces are being delivered via digital cable. Mm -hmm. uh, via stream service, mm -hmm. you know, basically over the air or aereo yeah. or cable or whatever. Mm -hmm. They're also being delivered via the internet, via an IP, but it's a digital service, mm -hmm. cut up on Hulu or on Netflix or on Amazon or on NBC.com or whatever. So that's one aspect of what we're doing. Mm -hmm. right. But there's a whole new medium that's, that's being built that, you know, we at Revision 3 are building and, and many other people, which are programs that don't fit that linear television model of 22 minutes and eight minutes of commercials and right. three right. acts or six right. acts or five. They're like three minutes long or 27 minutes long or 13 minutes long. And that are, that are in many ways very different and don't fit that, that are also being delivered digitally. So I think, well, so I think personally right. that there's the old medium television being delivered via the internet and other places. There's a new medium of, I don't know what you want to call it, web original video being delivered in the same ways and we're smushing them together. Right. What do you think? So, well, where do you draw the line? So is, is House of Cards a TV program then? It never, it only gets delivered over the internet, but it's still a distinct it's, season. It's, but they make the whole season available at once, but it's still the same size, like length of a TV show, but there's no commercial. I think it's a TV medium. It, it is a it, medium that has been, 
it is it is basically a television show that is being distributed only that way. Right. Because you said it's like a half hour, an hour long. Right. It, it's a piece of drama. This has been going on for hundreds of years, right? Yeah. It's a play. It's a, it's a teleplay. It's a, it's a Playhouse Presents production. It's a television show. It's being delivered on the internet. Who cares? People want their entertainment. They want their drama. Um, they do have certain concepts in their mind for how long that needs to be if you right. are a drama. Well, remember, the, the reason that they built it that way was because it, it, Netflix didn't buy it. They just bought the first run rights to it mm -hmm. for a certain amount of time and a certain ge geography. Mm -hmm. If they didn't have that, do you think they would have cut it up into like 15 minute segments or three hour segments or do you think they were left at an hour? I, I, I think, I don't know, but I think the, the idea is it is a 13 hour, it's an hour or a half hour? Uh, it's an hour watched show. Them. Hour. It's, a, it's a 13 hour movie or yeah. piece of drama, right? right? Piece of entertainment that's been cut up and story told in ways to keep you engaged. Right. The Come back for the next episode. The next episode see how it's an hour, right? right? Yeah. It's an hour experience. Keep you engaged to watch the next hour. Mm -hmm. There's no reason why it couldn't be a, a 27 minute experience mm -hmm. or a 44 minute experience. I, I think there is, and I, and I think the reason is acts, right? So what I was trying to what I was trying to say earlier is that we have been trained for hundreds of years what a drama is like. And it's broken into these segments, it's broken into these acts. Shakespeare did it, we're doing it now. And um, sure, you can make it 23 minutes or 25 minutes and have a whole bunch of them, but I, I think people are psychologically used to that sort of pattern. That's true, you don't see a lot of half hour dramas on you TV. Do not. They're all hour long because you need to have your ABC mm -hmm. acts. Well, so. but look at, I mean, bring up Shakespeare plays. Every act in a Shakespeare play is not an hour long. No, but you also right. couldn't say, okay, here's act one, come back later for act two, right? People want to, they'll, they'll take their, their break and they'll watch the second act and yeah. they'll, conclude the, uh, they'll conclude the play. And that's the way we have been trained for hundreds of years. I don't think that's changing, really. Yeah, well, I, what I would say to that is I think um, we will see a lot of people experimenting with a lot of different types of ways to tell stories and we will right. expand beyond the way with. that television, I look, as television I, I, started, why do we have half hour, an hour on television? Or, or not just we need to get people stories. to tune in at noon or at 4 p.m. or at well, 8.30. That's what I love about the, the House of Cards model anyways, is that like I've never understood why in this day and age, even ignoring the internet, just with cable and stuff like that, why there's still seasons that start at the same time yeah, in the right, fall and a sweeps week at the end. Like, why don't new TV shows just get started spread throughout the year? That is actually starting to happen, something. right? If you, Slowly, If, if yeah. you look at FX, like, their shows are traditionally 8 to 12 episodes a shot, yeah. and they, they put them on at random intervals. Yeah, and, and Comedy Central and, and stuff Comedy like Central that do those the same sorts thing, of things. Yeah. So, so it's starting to happen, especially on cable, but I don't know why ne even broadcast networks, why they have a season like they used to have. So and they're, they're all at the same times they used right, to have. Yeah. It makes well, no sense. I think it's well, the, one of the reasons why they do is, and you talked about sweeps, and because, remember, ad-supported ad medium needs to charge the most it can for every single ad spot. Yeah. And the more people that watch, the more people you can charge. And if there is one particular time when they're determining that, yeah. you know, that's why... Although that's now changing. That's changing as well, yeah. exactly. So, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm not sure... I agree with you that there's new ways of doing these things, but I think we're also going to see new forms. Because, like you said, now we see dramas and comedies and stuff like that. We see engaging of storytelling, whether it's a funny story or a drama or something like that. And we see things like game shows, yeah. which could really change mm -hmm. on the internet because they can be interactive in a way that they can't be on TV, which you could really do something special with. Yeah, you know? I, and then, but I think we'll see other things. I think we'll see other archetypes of TV shows that really are only made possible by the virtue of the fact that they're st streaming online and they don't have to follow a set schedule length, any of these things. So, so, you know, you, you, you just touched on this, and Jim, you spoke about this earlier. I mean, I think people will experiment with all this stuff, mm -hmm. but I'm going to maintain that it will snap back to the way it evolved to. When digital cameras first came out, people were experimenting with all sorts of wacky little form factors yeah. and ignoring the fact that it took hundreds of years to evolve a camera to look like it does, and now all the digital cameras are back to looking like cameras. Right. Same thing's going to happen with, with, with television, right? I mean, you can play around with eight minutes here, 15 minutes there, make this three hours, do this interactive, all that stuff. But yeah. people that want to just sit down, have a beer, watch a drama, I think you're always going to come I think back that's going to be true for dramas and comedies yeah. and well, but the things that exist now, but I think there will be new things that don't exist now that really only work well in an internet I media. Agree. Well, yeah, let's I talk about that. some of these existing forms and how they're going to develop, because I think we mm -hmm. spent a lot of time on drama, mm -hmm. which I, I, I think it's going to be interesting to watch that develop. I think you could do drama in three-minute chunks as well, but um, I'm with you. I think it needs to be longer. Um, let's talk about, um, let's talk about, you know, that's the scripted side. Let's talk about um, talk shows. Like uh, what we're doing right now. What we're doing right now. Um, this 
I mean, look, it, it's funny because we put downloaded together, and you know, we tried a couple of different things. And in the end, I feel, you know, like I, I feel like a little bit like you know, a very bad version of David Letterman sitting on a pedestal with, you know, you guys, my guests over there. It's like, I'm just, well, he's this, got better teeth. I'm, I'm not so. doing stupid human tricks either. Yeah, yeah. but. Is this format going to, I mean, it's changing already, but how do you see the oh, internet changing this kind of format? I, I think it's much more valuable. I think this format's much more valuable on the internet because it's much easier to yeah. get away from it if you're not right. interested in the topic. Right. And if you are interested, it's easier for it to last longer. I get so frustrated at The Daily Show when they have a really interesting guest on and they're just getting into a good discussion, but the show is this long and they go, we put the rest of it on the web. Yeah. You know, and that's really, I would just rather, just let can, go to can the, the show be three it. minutes longer? Yeah. yeah. Right, right. And on the web, it can't. So, um, so there's a lot of ways that this can expand. Rob, what do you think? Uh, I have to agree with everything you just said. I mean, it, this, is, this is a great medium for, for talk television. And actually, I, I don't think talk television is changing too much. I mean, yeah, it's kind of getting relegated to 1030 at night and later. <laughs> but uh, it's still, you know, talking heads uh, having an interesting conversation. It's been around for a while, and it, it seems to work pretty well. Well, it's almost it's, like it, that sort of sa make. Sunday morning, um, the like meet, meet the, the press, press style shows sure. have really been expanded out yeah. in so many different ways. I mean, I look to what, you know, Leo Laporte, for example, has done such a tremendous job with yeah. Twit mm -hmm. and being able to build out of this incredibly compelling talk show that people just want to check into. And they listen to it, they watch it, but it, it really, it ends up being you know, get the right people in a room talking about something, and it's really interesting. They don't even have to be in a room together. Right. Right, just get them together and, and talk about And there ends up being some topic. value with, you know, doing things like he does with the chat room where somebody from out there in the internet watching it can insert themselves into that conversation if they've got something really valuable to add. Yeah. Right, so that's, and that's the kind of thing you can't do well on TV. Yeah, exactly. Okay, so, um, what about magazine shows? Now you think about the magazine show where it's a little talk, a little bit of this, a little bit of that, kind of the variety show. We've seen that develop and expand as well, where mm. um, instead of having uh, like a half hour, an hour long, there'll be individual segments, and the segments one Monday, one Tuesday, one Wednesday, one Thursday, and they're different, but they all kind of relate to that theme. Is that, do we see that building out any more than that? I, that's a hard one. Yeah, it's a hard <laughs> one. I mean, I, I think the format you just described works for the Oprah's of the world, you know, mm -hmm. where, where you're doing right. the theme week. Uh, on the web, there's no concept of a theme week, right? So yeah. you, you would build a bunch of different video properties or constructs, and you'd put them together in a web construct and let people view it at their own, at their own rate. Right. I think that's the thing. It's a like playlist. a own magazine show, yeah, right? Yeah, basically. Yeah. It's a lot of what happens on YouTube. Okay. Um, yeah, games. Yeah, yeah. Game shows. You talked about this. Tell me, like, where do you see the future? Like, what, is, what can we do with game shows how now? Much, how much more fun thing? would it have been to watch Who Wants to Be a Millionaire if instead of just yelling at the TV, you could choose the questions and you could see what everybody else was choosing, you know, the percentages and stuff, and then something, you could get scored as you got things right or wrong, but you're watching it live, you can't tell ahead of time yeah. and stuff. It would be so much more fun to have interactive game shows, and game shows are primed to be interactive in that way. I don't know anybody who watches Jeopardy and doesn't yell at the answers at the TV. I, I, game shows themselves have changed. You know who has nailed this and totally nailed it? Bravo TV. Like Top Chef, I think is oh, right. brilliant. It's a brilliant blending of both television and the internet. And what they started doing last year was all the contestants that got thrown off, they'd pit together in sort of a, you know, yeah. staircase style competition. That's on a the little web. bit. They'd watch on the web. Game and show and a little bit back. reality TV because it's the same people that you follow through but a season. It, but it was yeah, but it was very interactive and it did a little bit of yeah. what we do here at Revision Three, where the hosts are in constant contact with the people watching the show. Right. And really well done. Yeah. And American Idol and The Voice and those guys sure. are doing that sort of thing too. Yep. And those are a little bit. They're, they're sort of game shows. They're sort of the gong show, too. They're talent yeah, contests, right. right? There's the con talent yeah. contest stuff. And that, I guess Top Chef is like that with, with cooking yeah. versus quiz shows and stuff so like that. I, I would, I, I would uh, this is going to be a totally uninformed view, but I would uh, <laughs> say I think game shows in many ways have failed on the Internet. We've yeah. seen a lot of people try a lot of stuff. They've just been terrible. I mean, there's a whole yeah, game show. Now. I remember a couple years ago, these guys down in San Mateo, like, we're going to build this. It's going to be all games. It's going to be all the memes. You're going to have the great host. And, and it, that just didn't work. Right. I got to agree with that. Well, yeah. Is it because it, it's hard? When you have a game show, it's a story about two or three people and their, their, their failures and their successes. If you got 3,000 people or 300,000 people, you can't follow the threads at all. The, ori the original internet game shows were based off of a model that was aimed at 1960s bored housewives during the day. Yeah. Right? yeah. And, and they're, they're, <laughs> anyone that's surfing the web is not that demographic, so it's just not going to hold anyone's attention. Right. Yeah, I think there's something I there. I think the but quiz I've, shows do better. Uh, quiz, Microsoft yeah. experimented with one versus 100 yeah. on Xbox yeah. Live where you could play, but there was a live host. 
you know, for certain questions and stuff. And that yeah. was actually really entertaining and they never kind of got behind it. It was only on Xbox Live and not something you could just pull up a web browser and, oh, it's uh, the new thing's on at three. I'm going to go be in the live one versus 100. But, but, but they the, could do the, something there. The, the most uh, sort of expansion of these sort of quiz style shows, I've seen it's when, you know, go to a pub in Britain on trivia night. I mean, <laughs> right. to me, that's this incredible. Yeah, pub trivia great. is the perfect <laughs> example great. of, you know, the kind of thing that could be an internet phenomenon but is, you know, now it's in pubs, it's not on TV. Yeah. But the internet could be the glue There's that lets people there. do that. Right, There's something exactly. there, right, exactly. All right, so that's game shows. What about the, the rants, right? So what about, you know, I think about... Oh, uh, the, the, the pundits, the yeah, screaming the pundits, heads. Yeah, the, the, the awesome. Andy Rooney, it's like, you know, <laughs> what's this I hear about Eagle rights, you know? And, and where, you know, where does that go? That is the internet. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and it's better on the internet because it can be short, yeah. you know, or, or long. long, or long, or as short as long as you want, you know, you're not like, well, this is going to be on this channel for the next 10 minutes, <laughs> I'm, changing the channel, I'm, right. I'm changing the channel, but I want to see, what, you know, you can just, all right, I'm done with that video, next video, whatever. So know, a lot of potential with, uh, with ranting, right? I think so. Oh, yeah. Rob? Yeah. It, was, it was based off ranting. It was based off ranting. Okay, <laughs> what, what about news? Oh. I think about the way news is, you know, the local newscast you ever, have you guys watched a local newscast recently? Oh, yeah. It's full of ads for people who are over the age of 60. Um, <laughs> yeah, local news is terrible. Yeah, well, think about why we used to watch local news, right? We used to watch it for the weather and sports. Mm -hmm. Well, now, where do we get that? Right. On the internet. Yeah, right. Who advertised on local news? Right. Car dealerships. Right. Right. All right. The, Sleep the Train Mattress back, Center. So. <laughs> but, but news in general is huge on the internet. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Video news kind of taken off in many ways. It's almost like the, the whole concept of roll your own newscast in many ways is happening, just not happening all at once. Mm. Yeah, there's, there's, there's two problems, right? So, so <clears throat> you know, there's a, successful news shows on the internet or successful, actually successful news shows anywhere now have to blend um, the original fourth estate concept with the immediacy of social media and they have to, they have to hit that line right in the middle. Right. So yeah. how, does that, how does that translate into failure? Uh, it translates into failure. <laughs> I know where when, you're going. Uh, yeah, it translates into failure when you've got a, a, a giant corporation running the news that just ex completely ignores the internet, completely ignores the social media component because they're late to the game almost all the time. Or now. they overcorrect. There or was they a good, overcorrect, There was yes. a good four months where CNN as a network was the what's happening on Twitter network. That's, yeah. like that's, that's all that, they that's, kept doing is saying, let's go to Twitter. And, 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 if, and if you go I to... I have the, Twitter. I don't if, need CNN. If you go to the other side, uh, you know, you're talking about, uh, you know, the, the, the villagers with the pitchfork kind of news reporting where, where you know, social yeah. media is your, your judge, jury, and executioner, and all the facts get wrong. When, when the tragedy in Boston went down the other week, my Twitter feed was filled with misinformation, over judgments. It was. It was, yeah. it was well, crazy. you look about the internet changing and perhaps to you know killing tr uh, television news. We're gonna have with, like as you bring it up with CNN. I mean, they went out with stuff that 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 urge for the scoop, which the internet has brought up. Mm -hmm. It's like we're gonna be the first one, and you know we're gonna get it before Netflix and or Netflix or Twitter. <laughs> um, you know they were wrong. Yeah. 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 A lot of people yeah. were wrong. Yeah. Yep. And Reddit. On Reddit, they were like outing people who had nothing to do with it. Right, that's the problem. That poor guy. Right. So yeah, so there's, I think there's still a place for um, expertise in news journalism that you don't get from crowdsourcing your yeah. information and mm -hmm. from trying to be have that immediacy of, of Twitter and Facebook and all that stuff. Um, and I don't know where the audience is for that because if you look at all the 24-hour news networks who have 24 hours to fill. All there, it's it's kind of like reading a social media feed. Oh they're yeah, just yeah, yeah. Viewing just, out whatever's just, new. They're just retweeting other yeah. networks. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Well, and I think it's social media and the race for scoops that we see on the web has really, really been a problem for um, for just news in general. Yeah, the first person to get it right doesn't necessarily win. Yeah, you know, right. It's just the first, the first person, person to just, say anything. Yeah. tends to get all the attention. Um, that's that's a problem. That's a I, I'm I'm looking forward to whatever correction comes yeah. <laughs> down the pipe for that. Yeah, get it get it right. Yeah. Don't get it first, but um, people, you know, it's like the water cooler thing. If you hear that so-and-so is uh, sleeping with so-and-so, it may be wrong, but everybody wants to talk about it, mm -hmm. right? Um, how about comedy? I mean, arguably, this is where the web is most successful. You think about, you know, YouTube is basically Saturday Night Live with a zillion little skits all over the place. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, what do you think happens with, with comedy? Does it grow up beyond that, or just become a bunch of, like, just... Crazy two to three minute skits that just are everywhere. Oh, I think it's already blown up. I, I no, mean, but, but does it go yeah. beyond that? 
Oh, that's a good, beyond it how, like beyond the web? Yeah, like beyond that, that format, of like think about. Oh, the, no, I think it's best for that format. I think the format of like your traditional sitcom, I'm following these same characters from episode to episode, these half hour sitcoms and stuff. I think that works well on TV and you could stream that stuff online, but that works well in that chunk. And I think all the skit-based stuff that has to be four minutes and stuff like that works well. On. I, I, w I would put down as exhibit the guilt. Right. Yep. right. Which, is, which really, yeah, if you slap example. it all together, it's an hour-long comedy show. But if you break it apart like that, it is a skit, sketch-based comedy. Mm -hmm. And it works. It actually yeah. does work very, very well. it does follow the others. But then sites like Funny or Die and you know, Break and all those other guys who are doing you know, college humor and everything, they're, they're doing nothing but like unrelated four minute or less videos that are funny skits and right. stuff mm -hmm. like that. And they're doing a great job and I don't think that goes very well the other way. HBO did a Funny or Die series. They did a Funny or Die show, right. They did a show and it was like a collection, really? it was a yeah. collection of skits no and it was not a good way to watch that stuff. Yeah. It was much better just to go to the site and go, I don't want to watch that one. Well on the other side, something, another thing that just happened uh, in the last week or so that was interesting is Yahoo just got access, they, just, they now have exclusive access to the entire back catalog of Saturday Night Live. Yeah. So if you right. want to go watch, um, that's awesome. You know, any, any of those old great clips, the Blues Brothers, the uh, Samurai Deli, I, you got to go to Yahoo. So side side question: What did that do to Hulu's deal with the Saturday Night Live done. people? Gone. Done. Is it done? Done. Wow. Okay. Yeah, but interesting. But I think to me, the Saturday Night Live skits, uh, mm -hmm. it, that, uh, the Saturday Night Live is the CD record of comedy, right? Mm -hmm. Right. There's like four of them are good. The other seven <laughs> suck. Um, one of them might be okay. Right. And but break it up, and there's like two or three great ones. And if you watch them individually, to me that's the beauty of the internet. I can just watch. I go right to Weekend Update with Chevy Chase. Right. I don't have to worry about any of the others. It's, yeah. It's the Star Trek of comedy. Why? One third of it is good. One third of it is. <laughs> yeah. Well, it, but it's it is perfect for being broken up into on and put on the internet, skit by skit and you can watch the ones you want. I, I enjoy Saturday Night Live immeasurably more now that I just you know, record it. Uh, and fast and forward, totally and fast forward through the commercials, and yep. the musical guests that I don't want to see. The badly mixed and music. The, yeah. And the bad, and the, like when a skit stops being good and there's two minutes left, I just, nah, this is jump Or you're 30 seconds into it, and you know yeah. that it's not going to It makes be a good. great 30 minute, 40 right. minute show. I agree. Uh, and you know, the, on the, online, that's all you're going to get is the skit. Well, it's like me with The Daily Show. I mean, I, I watch The Daily Show, but I, I skip through the commercials, and I don't watch the guests ever. Because hmm. I just, I don't, they're not long enough, they're not they're good not enough. enough. They're like, I'm like, ah, it's not going to go there. It's too expensive. But so, how does the Yahoo exclusive access to this? I mean, it's great for Yahoo, right? It's it can really help jumpstart their comedy vertical. Does this change anything? No, not uh, on its own. If this is step one of a big phase of acquiring a bunch of great video content, maybe it does. But it, it depends on what their sharing policies are too, right? Oh, yeah. I mean, like a, if I, <clears throat> with Hulu, it was difficult. I mean, you could do it. You could send out a clip of a Saturday Night Live skit to Jim. Yeah. Right. But it was it was there was certain blocking factors in place. But with Yahoo, if they have an open share policy, then it can get interesting. Yeah. And it's also then, I also want to know material can become viral again. Yeah. I'm really wondering what their there's all these weird issues with yeah with Hulu with like this one's only playable in a web browser on the computer and right. not on devices and right. stuff. And I'm wondering if the deal they negotiated and all their de deals are for devices and stuff. Yeah. Too, that I do not know. But that, it's a good that's question. important to me. Um, I, what about the funny cute space? I mean, this is something that uh, television wasn't really, although we did have a show on Animal Planet called Too Cute. We still do. I think they brought it back. But um, uh, that whole funny cute thing, not really, well, sad, you know, it, America's Funniest Home Videos had its share of cute. But um, and man, the internet was built on cute. Yeah. How do you, th how do you see that developing out? Is, it, is cute going to take over television? What's the t shirt this guy's got on? It's pretty cute. There you go, Jason. Pretty awesome. Yeah, yeah that is actually. What, tell me about that T-shirt. So this is just Grumpy Cat in yeah. Hello Kitty style. So it's awesome. either so, Grumpy Kitty or but it's Hello very Grumpy. Cute. Or, it is see, cute. Is taken so, over. So, so cute is taken over. I never yeah. would say that about Jason, but it's made him cute. Well, it's um, grumpy too. So. It's grumpy and cute. Uh, Which you, yeah, okay. <laughs> but it's. Uh, I, I don't. I mean, I don't see it. I don't think it's going anywhere. All the cute stuff. Uh, that's. That's what all my friends keep sharing all the time is like adorable animated gifs. And right. Stuff, it's so. like I funny and uh, I can has cheeseburger and that's like sure. that's the web. Yep. Um, but has it changed television? I don't think it has that much. No, and I don't no. think it's gonna because you no. can't you can't make any of that long enough to. Right. A half hour of all that is just it's like you want to throw up. Yeah. Yeah. Um, how about reality TV? Um, 
There's, we have, there's uh, been attempts to do that stuff on the web, and it hasn't been great. The web right? is almost reality TV. I mean, if it's done oh, well, it's actually yeah. real reality TV, right? <laughs> yeah. Which is not what people no. appear to want. No. They, they want, want honey- scripted, set up, contrived <laughs> Well, look, just, reality just to be clear, the way, at least we're right. watching the way we do reality TV here at Discovery, uh, it's basically, it is all unscripted. But, right. But you can, when you get 40 hours worth of footage and you go in and you have to do a half hour show or an hour mm-hmm. show, you can tell the story you want. Right. Right? So exactly. It may not have yeah. actually happened exactly that way. You can tell the story you want. But people want that. They want, when it comes to reality, they want that sort of, that story told, I think. Right. So the, the, as far as I know, the number one reality show right now is Pawn Stars on TV. Uh-huh. That's, not a, that's not a game show like The Voice or something like uh-huh. that. Right. It's, it's Pawn Stars, right? And, and that's a reality show, but it's not. They close down the shop. They, they yeah, get but, people to come back in who were there to sell things before and talk about, like, and they kind of stage what really happened. So these aren't actors, and they don't have, they're not reading a prompt, they're not memorizing lines, but it is all staged yeah. to be the best of what it kind so of was. I'm and that's hear, what people, I think, What want. I'm hearing you both say is that people want drama. Right, a little bit. That's what they want in their their reality. But on the internet, you know, I can stick up a Jenny cam and I can, you know, do (laughs) the the Uh, real life of Jenny. Jenny cam. Mm. You remember Jenny cam? I miss Jenny cam. Yes, I do remember. (laughs) But do you you think people want that? That's that's my bigger question. Technically, we're capable of doing that sort of thing, but... Is I, Jenny I think, Cam still around? I think people no. don't want that. No. no. I think people answer. want no. all their edited. Yeah, yeah, they want it edited down. Well, do you see that kind of uh, reality TV where you take, you know, it's, it's making a good reality TV program is expensive. 40 mm-hmm. hours to one hour, many. Do you see that developing its own framework? Because I don't see it happening on the internet that much. No. I don't think the internet's changed reality television. No, I don't think either of those is true. And I don't know. So. I, I think we need a lot more money in there until we do. I mean, it, um, what about sports? Let's talk about sports. Ah. The, uh, sports, the internet should be changing sports a lot more than it is. You can, like, you can, you can thank the, uh, the MLB and all, yeah, right. just all the, these, these guys, the, yeah. the I don't yeah. get it cr- crowd of, you know, old time, you know, sports. They're going to ride that thing right down to the ground. Stuff like that. Yeah. Like, there's no reason that a great product like, you know, the MLB bat stuff where you, yeah. you, you, I can stream all the games except the ones where I live that I care the most about, right? Right, like, because, yeah. Because, because licensing, blackout rules. Because on, blackout yeah, rules on licensing exactly. and stuff like that. And there's absolutely no reason I couldn't just, for less money, subscribe to one team and just get all that one team's games. Mm-hmm. And all these things that would be so trivial and great to do on the internet, and they don't want to provide what people want because old school licensing. Well, garbage. sports, in many ways, are the things that are saving the cable bundle. Right? Yeah. I mean, you think about it. In people, like, you can get just about everything else except for sports. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And they're willing to, you know, sacrifice what everybody wants to do in the way they want to do it to the altar of let's save cable. And now all that's going to happen is people are going to pirate and mm-hmm. steal and stream and Aereo and all this other stuff. They're going to find every other way they can to get around it until they wake up and provide what people yeah, want. Yeah, Rob, my sense is that, and I've seen this, and you've seen it with technology as well, when technology allows consumers to get what they want, um, they tend to do it. Yeah. When uh, they tend to do it, they'll pay for it. When they get what they want easily. Yeah. And actually, yeah. this is a really good point. Like the, um, <clears throat> you know, let's assume that you know somebody in this room used to bit torrent things. Sure. Right. No, but, none, but, of but, but, ever, none of us have ever. None of us have ever had, but just sure. theoretically. And uh, you know, it, it, theoretically, it was a pain in the neck, right? Uh, yeah. And then Amazon showed up, and Netflix showed up, and it is dead simple now to 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 just pay a buck, buck right. and a half. I, I, right. Exactly. I mean, my. I got to tell you, um, I spend more on television at home now than I ever did because I still mm-hmm. paid for Direct TV. That's right. Mm-hmm. But now my iTunes bill is through the roof. Yep. I got Netflix, Hulu, uh, Amazon Prime, yep. but uh, I, it's mostly the free shipping. But you know, we watch stuff on there too. So it's, it's happened with music. Uh, iTunes just turned ten, mm-hmm. and it changed the way people direct pay for music. But it was never a deal. Ninety nine cents a track is what right. CDs cost, right. and and it's or just convenient. Buying it's just convenient. And piracy was still a problem. This is the first year that uh, piracy is down in music. And gee, it's also the first year that we have these subscription services like Spotify and everything taking off and providing people what they want, which is like, you know, I'll pay ten bucks, Just give me thing, and I'll g- and let me listen to whatever I want. Right. You know. Well, so it's the same sort of thing. They're just not catching on in other places. I wonder about, um, and then, so I'm, I'm good buds with the TriCaster guys. You know, the guys who make this basically a satellite truck in a box that puts 
three, four, six different HD things. And a lot of, a lot of universities use it for sports, for mm -hmm. doing things that aren't, you know, don't go on ESPN College or ESPNU. Um, I'm surprised we haven't seen more of that kind of taking off where there's a, all of a sudden some sport comes out of nowhere and it doesn't go on television. It ends up just using a box like this and live streaming. Think about MMA, right? It's mm -hmm. like, yeah. when, we, when that next MMA was, was created, mm -hmm. um, wrestling was created as a television event. I wonder, and this is what I think will happen, we haven't seen it happen yet. I, I think we're going to end up with a sport that none of us can imagine that's going to be hugely popular and it's only going to be on the internet. Uh, Am I drinking fairy dust? No, but here's, here, I'll further that question. Will that sport be a video game? Haha. -ha. That is a very good question. That's a very good question. Actually. What do you think? Well, already the video game stuff is, is popular online, but I don't know if it'll ever reach that crest into the mainstream. Because yeah, there's I, that I just can't there's watch a StarCraft. I mean, yeah, you know, or it do it League of Legends or something. You you need a certain familiarity, yeah. and I, they're not there. But maybe the right game would do it. Well, this leads into augmentation. I mean, have you tried watching Defiance? Are you aware of the whole Defiance I'm situation? Aware of it, yeah. Yeah. So Defiance is a show on the Sci-Fi Network, and it's also um, a digital game property at mm. uh, I forgot the name of the company. Um, <clears throat> and you're both it, they're basically two portals into the same world. Mm -hmm. And in theory, the gameplay uh, that you're playing on the Defiance game bleeds into the TV show and vice versa, yep. right? Which is, if in they theory. can pull that off, yeah. that's very interesting. Yeah. We've been sort of watching that, and it's not been really pulled off very well. Correct. Yet, yeah. Correct. That's, that is sort of the dream, right? Yeah. 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 Um, so I, I think sports has a lot of potential, um, but again, the rights things, and for the major sports, you know. For the major sports, but yeah, is, is there another sport? Is there another sport? Is, is, there, sport? is there an MMA out there that someone's going to build as an internet-only property? And it could be a video game property. Yeah, a, yeah. Could it's a really, it. really good one. Let's shift gears a little bit and talk a little bit about devices and delivery uh, and the way people watch. You know, look, it used to be all one screen. We'd have one TV at home. Uh, I was sharing this uh, that, you know, when we grew up, we had one television and you had to pick. <laughs> With a knob watched. you had to turn. Yeah, right. We had to get off, up off the couch. <laughs> now every, you know, I, I mean, how many... How many video capable viewing devices, Jason, do you own? Oh God, don't even. Wait, how many screens, essentially, they right? They can receive video, whether uh, it's a yeah. television I, or I over think the I've air. Got about, I think I've got about six screens that can receive uh, video. Uh, how, many, how many video screens do I have on my body right now? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, I, I, I've got over 20, easily. Yeah. Do we, so we've got all these screens, and there's more to come. Uh, I think Cisco said on average, the average American will have eight internet connected devices in uh, 2016. Yeah. I have um, another 10 connected to the one screen in the living room. Right. Right. But but yeah, think about it. Like we're gonna have eight, 10, 15, whatever. There's gonna be a explosion of things that can and of many sizes. These glowing rectangles and watch video. Sure. Do you think it, are people gonna continue to program for in different size screens, or is it just make it once and put I, it everywhere? I hope not. I, I, <laughs> hope, I hope we don't get to the world that the music industry has gotten to. When, when I was going to college, it was all about how much money you could spend on the fidelity for the sound. Can you hear the guy blowing into the horn? Can you yeah. feel the strings going up and down? And now nobody gives a crap. Now everyone's got those two goofy little earbuds in and they're listening to the you know, degraded music on their iPods. And you have a problem iPhones. with us. I do. I think, I, think it's, I think it's a horrible, um, I think it's very convenient, but I think it becomes a very horrible entertainment experience. And I hope it doesn't carry in over into video. I mean, I, I love... Well, wait, wait, I think there's going to be stop you there for a minute, because look at what we're doing on video. Mm -hmm. We create a really beautiful HD experience, yeah. and then we encode it down correct. to right. HLS and, and correct. other things and so that's, that we that, can adapt That's what I'm saying. But, but your original question was, do you think people are going to program for different screens? And I hope they don't, because I, I don't want to lose that experience. And I'm going to bet they, they do program for different screens only in, only in as much as... Uh, uh, second, there's, there's second screen experiences? Well, no, that there's there's the experience that you want on your TV, your living room, maybe even your tablet that can be longer where you just want to sit and watch stuff. And then there's the thing you want on your mobile device on the go where you don't want to watch a half hour program or you don't have time to watch a half hour program. You, you've you got, you know, a f you want to watch a four minute skit or right. something on the bus. So I think there's going to be time differences, but hopefully not other production value issues. Yeah, yeah but look at that four minute skit on the bus. You can watch on everything from your uh, mobile phone that's a 320 screen mm -hmm. right. to your uh, retinal display on an iPad, mm -hmm. which is a 2K screen. Yeah. But it's the same piece of content, so. I, right, and I think the content would, would vary more on where you're watching it and stuff. And so I don't want to watch that four minute clip on my sitting in my living room, because then what do I do? See, that's what I hope doesn't happen, right? Yeah. I, I keep the production values high, just do the same set design, costume design, everything that you would normally do, and if yeah. I watch five minutes of the show on the bus, 
and then watch the rest when I get home because I, I session shifted off to my television set. That would be handy. That would be great, yeah. right? Yeah, I, I just, uh, to me, it's like just develop it once and put it out across all those well, different you know, screens. Because uh, you all know the Android, look like. All the Android phones now are, are 1080p, all the new ones mm -hmm. and yeah. stuff like that. So maybe uh, t this is just, there's just a little lag and in two years it won't matter. It's all going to be high res everywhere and... We're all going to have, and all we're going to have happy bandwidth everywhere to be able to support that high yeah, res. You know, speaking that's the of dream. The, ha the happy <laughs> bandwidth we need, look, I was down um, in our little uh, test lab here at Revision Three, looking at a 4K TV mm -hmm. yeah. uh, yesterday that we just got in. Um, how is 4K change? Is 4K going to change everything? Well, again? That, that that continues your conversation, right? So 4K basically gives you 75 millimeter video, right? So it's it's what you see projected. It's like 75 out. millimeter video. Yeah, that's. I think that's what the resolution works out to, isn't it? I have no idea. Yeah, so you're talking so, about film? Yeah, talking about oh, okay. film resolution. I think, I think 4K gives you the full film resolution. Uh, so again, you shoot once for one format, and then it carries down to everywhere that you go. So you know, having that experience in your living room, it's great, but then you scale it down again to run on your iPad or whatever you've, you've currently got. Okay, then what about um, like the Phantom camera that does 1,000 to 10,000 frames a second? So we should, should we shoot everything at 10,000 frames a second, uh, 8K, and then just scale it down? I'm taking you to your logic. I, I know, but going back to that, this is actually pretty good because this goes back to the, the, the whole music argument. There was uh, Kurzweil, actually, uh, uh, yep, back, right. in the, back in the 90s, uh, was insisting that people could tell the difference between oversampled CDs and normal CDs. So he, they, there were these, mm. there were these like five or $10,000 CD players that would play this incredibly oversampled music. I couldn't hear the difference. I mean, maybe people could, but. So maybe people can see the difference on... Yeah, on, we, right? we used to do these tests all the time at Tech TV where we would get uh, various different um, MP3 players and the same set of headphones oh, yeah. and CDs. And we would just, we'd take everyone through. We'd like, listen, rate what's best. You know, everyone would, no one would pick the best it's a quality. Yeah, best. and those are always terrible tests because you, you're eliminating the convenience factor, yeah. which is what, you know, you're, totally. you're only yeah. judging those things. So convenience trumps quality in a lot of cases. So you, you were talking about with music. Uh, you brought up the term, one of you did, second screen. You did, Rob. I am uh, going to throw out a, a, an assertion, and I would like you to respond to it. Hmm. My assertion is that there is no such thing as a second screen, hmm. that it is only a first screen. That if you're watching TV and you move down to your iPad or something else, your, your iPad becomes a first screen, and that screen doesn't matter. Um. Well, that's an interesting, that, that's a, almost a semantic argument. Yeah. Uh, for, for the first time right. this week, I, I watched um, Game of Thrones on my Xbox running Smart Glass on my tablet. Right. And I, I got to tell you, now, I, I, admittedly, that was a captured experience. Mm -hmm. That was the first time where I went, uh oh, this is great. That's one of the only this great second screen experiences. Well, so, to talk, so explain the experience and as, why it added value to watching as, Game as of Thrones. If anyone's never seen Game of Thrones, uh, you know they, they 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 cast Rob and John to look exactly the same, and and uh, you uh, you cannot remember the family names or the relationships between everybody. And there's <laughs> you know brothers mating with sisters, and there's, you can't keep track of everything. And as you're watching the show. What happens on the second screen experience is you get a genealogy and you get uh, uh, actor comments and you get all this stuff. As, it follows as, on the map if, where they where are. Where they are on the map. And, and, and as you're watching it, on the, on, you can actually make sense of everything. Right. And you might argue that maybe the show is too overcomplicated in the first place and they sh you shouldn't have to do that. But think, but, of, think of that same thing with sports. Exactly. I was just going to say, with sports or with any of those game I shows really we're talking about. I really want to watch a, a baseball game and have all the stats live real time here and not just wait for the for when they pull up the interesting stat on the screen. I really want all that stuff there live as a second screen experience that's synced up to the game. Right, because in baseball, he throws the pitch, right. something happens, and then there's 30 seconds of guys scratching their balls until he throws the next pitch. During those 30 seconds, I don't want to watch him scratch his ball or whatever's going on. I like the idea of looking at that thing. Right, or, you know, but that foot, second football or, or, you know, so many right. other Sports, yeah. I can just imagine that. Well, that football's being the same great. thing. Football has a gap. Now, when I watch right. hockey, hockey's going full speed. Right. I'm probably or not going to look down and go back up yeah. until they until there's a timeout. Mm -hmm. So it depends on the experience as well. Yeah. So um, they're not doing a great job of second screen experiences right now. The, right. This specific one they did. They, that yeah, specific that, one, it's, you it's, can it get can that. all look like. So that. this yeah. is only it's, on the Xbox. No. Right? Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's not got, quite. It's got to be on the Xbox playing with a compatible so, tablet. So, yeah, to do that, there's the Smart Glass feature. But the Smart Glass feature is exactly what you get if you go to HBO Go online, mm -hmm. not on your iPad or something, but on right. the web, uh, and watch Game of Thrones, you get an option to watch the regular but, or the enhanced but, experience. But this, the but this is where the second screen thing comes in because that doesn't work very well. 
Like if you if you go to yeah, the, you it, get a, a video it, window all, yeah, and then you get another a compressed video of the show and you get this other thing. Separate. But if you but it's got, the same, you get an idea what the same thing. Yeah, is. and so um, so and it'll work if you're watching it. Um, uh, on demand as well, right? Well, it only works if you're watching yeah. it. It doesn't okay. work live, okay. actually. It doesn't work on the first run of the show. Interesting. Because right. they're, they're composing the content, I think. Is what's you want to see what a good second experience uh, thing looks like? I suppose you have to be able to subscribe to HBO Go. You have to be on HBO yeah. Go, yeah. and you have to have a so, iPad, Android, or Windows 8 tablet. Cool. Um, let's talk about gaming consoles just for a sec. We've got the, um, you know, the 720 or whatever it is that's rolling out. Supposedly, it's going to be the center of our digital mm. video universe <laughs> in the living room. Do you guys buy the fact that our game consoles are going to change television for us yet again? They're already starting. Like yeah. with these seven-year-old consoles we have already, things like Netflix and Hulu and stuff like that are have outstripped their use from, thing, from games, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. People are using more for that than for games. So, and with new, better, more powerful ones that aren't seven-year-old hardware and, and such. We could probably do a lot more with making them more responsive, have more channels, more ways to get be more interactive, hook these things all together. Yep. And so, Rob, you've built a bunch of home theater PCs, mm -hmm. um, and now it sounds like you're doing a lot of viewing of video on I, your uh, Xbox. I do. I've got, I've got uh, my home video PC, I've got an Xbox, and I've got a PS3, so I get to compare them and play with all of them. And yeah, they're seven-year-old pieces of content, but the w or hardware, but the way that they make those devices and the reason that the lag is so huge on those devices mm -hmm. is that they, they plan way out, and they plan that sort of obsolescence sure. so that people can, can program into it. So, so when the 720 comes out, you'll only be using about 10, 20% of that box yeah. until people code for it. Right. But um, it, it's, it, it is a unique, interesting way to do this. Netflix on the PS3, and I think this is only true on the PS3, it's a Blu-ray experience. Yeah. Bar none. I mean, yeah. it, it's uh, you know, 1080p um, plus so seven really, channels yeah. of audio. Yeah. yeah. What, what about... If you um, have the supported yes. cable, correct, uh, supported correct. internet network. And right. stuff. Yeah. What about uh, smart TVs then? Do smart TVs have a place in this beautiful, wonderful world of the future? Last Rob? year, last year I would have said no, and now uh, seeing what Samsung's doing and some of the other competitors are doing, um, it definitely hits that niche market of people that don't want to screw around with the receiver and the seven channels of audio right. and the internet boxes and all this other nonsense. You just put one thing on the I wall. Don't know and you anyone who uses in. any of it? Of of what? Any smart TV features on any TV? Like I don't know any. I right, I know people who have those, watching, but I don't know anyone. You guys who, watching, if you use any smart them. TV for anything, put something down there and tell us what you use your smart TV book for, um, besides just dumb things. Right. <laughs> like they, everyone uses it the first couple of weeks, they get one because it's neat. But yeah. then after that, like I don't know anybody who actually goes through Netflix on their smart TVs, Netflix thing or whatever. And it's great that they had these things. I think it's. I think they should continue building these things out, but I personally don't know anyone who uses it that way. All right, finally, my last question for you on this, uh, as we talk about the future of TV. Is Google Glass going to change the <gasps> TV? Or, or, or something like it? Or something like yeah. it? Uh, Video consumption? I, I, yeah. I, I got to think it has to. I, I've been fortunate enough to be involved in the Google Glass program early on, so yeah. I've, I've been playing with it now for a while, for a little less than a year. Yeah. Um, and I was skeptical. Right, I was I, I was I was completely skeptical because all I've seen was sort of these sort of like GoPro sort of ads. Oh for yeah. Thing. Um, playing around with sort of the early copies of it, it's it's pretty impressive. And in a television environment, you could do a nice second screen. I don't think you would want to watch primary mm -hmm. on it because it is. It well, the is, resolution's not high enough at this point, right? Your eye can't really tell. I mean, the the, the, yeah, the things are small. It, it, it's so small in the way that they position. Well, that's it the problem. It. Is it's just this little piece up here in your vision. It's yeah. not your overall that's vision. What, it's not overlaid over your right. whole yeah. eye. Which for the genealogy stuff would be great. You're yes. watching Game of Thrones yes. all the time. Looking up <laughs> and yeah. Oh, he's related to him. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. That kind of thing. Yeah. So yeah, I don't know. I think Google Glass is going to get there. I think until it, it goes over your entire frame of vision, yeah. it's not going to happen. Well, um, there's. But in terms of creating content for web video, the idea that everyone's got a video camera strapped to their head could be very right. interesting. Well, that's reality TV right there, isn't it? Right. Well, that's a different, but maybe a different, better way to source reality TV is to be able to put you in somebody else's eyes, right? And not and and everyone's I shooting live, all the time. Yeah, exactly. I now it's a different problem. Now it's five hundred hours of video. You need to compress into something See, short. I'm right? going to New Orleans for Jazz Fest, but I could, you know, there are people there. I could be them and go and not have to leave the house. Yeah. An experience it would be if neat I if, I, their, if I could watch through your eyes because you're going right. and I'm not. Exactly. Yeah, I wouldn't want you actually to see a lot of it. <laughs> no. That's Some of it <laughs> would be good. Hey, that's it for this episode of Downloaded. I, I want to thank both of you guys uh, for joining me, Rob DeMillo, Jason Cross. Uh, that's it. We've just figured out the future TV. 
I hope you all have fun in our great new high connected, high bandwidth, high bit rate environment. If you have any uh, questions or comments, suggestions, whatever, put them in the comments down below and uh, we'll get the conversation going. And until next time, you've been watching Downloaded.